Welcome back to Life in the North 40. I'm Rick. And I'm Brittany. And on today's video, Rick is going to show you a lot of homestead improvements that we've done to our house over the last four years. We've improved our well with a simple pump. We have multiple backup generators. We increased our propane tank. And then we also have better water storage. This is going to be a really exciting video. I can't wait for him to walk you through everything. Don't, don't forget, babe, we also had to wire our well pump to our backup generator oh, when yeah. we moved in our generator or our backup sub panel for our generator was not connected to our well so when we lost power we lost water yep so very important fix that we did and can't wait to show you guys i hope you enjoyed today's video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel let's go I'm going to show you our extreme preparedness option that we did for a grid down scenario or extended power outages. I can't get any more propane, etc. I do have my well with a submersible pump that is backed up by my backup propane generator. But my thought processes were, hey, what if I can't get propane anymore? I am up on the side of a hill. We're at about 2,600 feet, which isn't super high elevation, but we're about uh, 400 feet from the lake below us, which we don't have, our property doesn't meet the lake itself. So if I had to hold in place here on our property, water is more important than food. We know that one gallon of water weighs about seven and a half pounds. That would be a lot of work sending a watering party down to the lake every day for your water needs. So I realized I needed a way to draw water out of my existing well. So I did some research and I found out about this. It's called a simple pump and it takes your existing well setup. You put a new wellhead cover on here that has a machined hole that allows you to mount the pump assembly on top and lower the uh, needed amount of drop pipe into your well casement below your static water level. Now this well was designed or installed in 2003 and on the well report it said that our static water level was 120 feet. We actually installed this setup last summer during the peak of an extreme drought in August. So our water level, static water level, had dropped substantially. We didn't know exactly where it was. So the published depth, maximum depth for this, this setup from the company is 300 feet. That's the max amount of depth of drop pipe you can do on this particular product. We ended up having to go to 290 feet to hit water. So we went to 150 initially because we didn't want to over purchase product. We found that we hadn't hit the water level. So we went to a total of 290 and finally hit water. So the beauty of this is it's a manual setup. It doesn't require power and I have a fitting on the end here that takes a normal garden hose. And the beauty of that is I can connect a potable garden hose here and I can run to the frost free uh, spigot or hydrant that I have around the fence here that we'll show you as well that r will run down into my existing pressure tank in my house which is also lower than we are now. And the diaphragm on that pressure tank is about 35 PSI. This pump pushes just over that, plus the drop of elevation down into our basement, and we are uphill from the house, will push into that pressure tank. So we wouldn't have to run a hose into our house in a grid down scenario or haul the water from here. We can literally pump, someone would have to be here pumping into that hydrant and it would flow into the house and into our fixtures. Now we wouldn't have hot water at that point because our propane hot water heater will not be running. But this was a fix to keep us in water and we all know water is ultra important. Again, the company is called Simple Pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and pump this. And you know, when I installed this in the extreme heat and drought of August, it took about 250 pumps to start to draw the water up from the depth the water was at at that time. Let's see how many pumps it takes today to start pulling water. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pretty easy to actuate, eight with this length of handle. So we have to draw that water all the way from the depth it's at. 21 up to the top. Seven. Get a little workout too. 36, 37, 38, 39, 
it took about 135 pumps before I started to get water. If I had a hose connected here, it would stand her pressure and it would, it would build, I have a little pressure gauge here and it would push that water, like I said, through that hose either into the house or you'll see here I have a frost free hydrant that's connected under the frost line straight to the uh, pitless run of the well. Right now it's under pressure because the, the pump is, is good and connected. But if I didn't have power to run that pump, I could run a hose from that pump I just showed you right to this, open that valve, and because of the drop to my basement and my house from the wellhead, along with the pressure this pump produces, it will push into our house, into our existing pressure tank. So this is a huge fix for a grid down scenario to keep us in water. Pretty cool, pretty exciting. This simple pump, you pay by the length that you purchase. So we went to the, almost to the maximum length. So we spent probably about the full amount you can spend um, on the drop pipe. So I hope you got a good idea out of this for your uses if you need as a backup system that doesn't require power to maintain your water. So what I wanted to show you here down in the shop is our solution for not having a water storage tank or a cistern on our property. When our house was built in 2004, a water cistern was not required. We are in the woods and our fire district uh, has now, for newer construction, has made uh, minimum cistern uh, water storage mandatory on each property for fire abatement. Um, but we did not have that installed, so I, I did price a year or so ago what it would cost to get a buried cistern, have it plumbed into our existing well and all that, and it was going to be upwards of 20 grand. So I started to do my research of other options, and I found out about these IBC potable food grade water totes. And I actually got these at Tractor Supply, I ordered them and picked them up at the store. And these are great because they're transportable. Um, this does say that for stacking purposes and transport, you can't exceed 1,650 kilograms. I don't know what that is in pounds. Um, these are just stacked because they're empty. But my thought was with these is if and when I see a grid down scenario coming, because I do have a backup generator on propane to run my well, uh, before I ran out of propane, if I couldn't, if I saw the writing on the wall that I wouldn't be able to get any propane in the future, I could take this up and co-locate one of these, uh, by, or both of them, by my wellhead and fill these while I still have pump capacity. Um, and then the other one I could put in the back of my truck. I could fill it with water and maneuver it around my property as needed for watering animals or, you know, our plants, garden, trees, whatever, and or if we had a, a perimeter around our property, I could, I could transport this. Although I do have army water cans, five gallon water jugs as well. But these are great. They do come with, they have their own valve. They do have their own valve here, a shut off valve, and it's got a safety deal on it right now. I have not used these yet. I need to do our pre-rinse with bleach this summer. It's on my to-do list. They're still sealed, but you see that's got a pretty good diameter opening. Um, what I did is I bought, they make converters, and I think I got these on Amazon, that will reduce that fitting down to a garden hose size male fitting. So you could connect a garden hose and put this, you know, feed whatever you needed to off of these totes. So this was a, a fairly inexpensive, uh, easy, well, way more inexpensive than having a proper cistern installed. A solution for us for a good quantity of water storage if and when we need it. Each one of these holds about 300 gallons of water full and that's going to weigh about 2,250 pounds which is over a ton. That's pretty heavy. I could put that in the back of my truck and drive it very slowly around. I couldn't be on uneven terrain. Definitely couldn't put this in the back of my Polaris Ranger. It's just too heavy if it was full. So these are just a great solution I wanted to make you aware of. I can't remember what I paid for these again. I bought them a year and some change ago so prices as we know aren't even the same anymore because of inflation so but great solution I'm currently storing them in my shop um, just wanted, wanted to show you those and highlight those because I think they're a great item to have especially for preparedness and water storage on to the next thing I wanted to show you this just because this is one of the things that we did when we moved in here in 2018 that we upgraded to and improved we had an old 500 gallon propane tank on site right here on the property. And I realized, hey, I want a bigger capacity because we added some things. Uh, 
from the previous owner. One, we added a, a huge shop heater into our shop. And two, we added a backup propane generator under our deck that's plumbed to propane. So I wanted to increase to a thousand gallon capacity. So if you're not aware, when you think you're gonna get a thousand gallon tank and get a thousand gallons of propane, not completely accurate, you can only fill a propane tank to 20% of its overall capacity for expansion. So really, a thousand gallon tank holds 800 gallons of propane for planting. So you see, I just have a camo net. I was initially gonna build a fence to conceal this because it's ugly and unsightly, but I had a camo net and this is a great way to do it and it's very inexpensive. So I've got the filling valve right here and I'm currently at about 780 gallons still, so I'm almost still full. Uh, I, had, I did have this topped off this winter. It was pretty spendy. And, uh, so we're pretty topped off right now. And then in, through the summertime, through the summertime we use less propane, obviously. The only thing we're running propane on in our house is our, per, our furnace is running off of a heat pump while we have power. But if we lose power, I can convert that furnace to run off propane in emergency mode. We also have a gas or propane cooktop. We have an instant hot water uh, heater that runs off propane. We have the shop heater that runs off propane. And then we have that backup generator that runs off propane. So that's what we're using propane for. So like I said, if we lose propane, I can maintain water because I do have that simple pump um, to pull it manually. So that's another upgrade we've done. I would like to get a second propane tank with, with the COVID logistic shortages and the increase in construction materials. These tanks were unavailable this winter. I called around and the couple that were available were probably double the cost as what they used to be. So if and when these come back into stock and they become more feasible um, economically, I will get a second one. Uh, so we just have that much more capacity. And another beauty of that is propane's typically the cheapest in the middle of the summer. With a tank this large, you can fill it when it's the cheapest and then it'll last you through the year. All right guys, let's check out our next improvement. Some additional items that I have that I highly recommend while we still have propane and the ability to get it, I know it's gone up, but I wanted additional cooking items to use propane to cook outside if and when we lose electricity um, and before I go to firewood, which I have a lot of. But this is something I inherited from my dad. This is one of your turkey fryer type style burners, which is really good for cast iron. Um, and this just connects to your normal uh, small propane bottle. So I already had that. That's a great item um, and it gets super hot, super quick, super easy. So that's a cool thing to have. In addition, I have this mini Weber grill. I obviously wouldn't cook with this inside here without opening all the windows, but I would primarily cook outside under a covered area for ventilation. You screw your small Coleman propane bottles in here typically, but what I have here is an adapter hose that allows you to connect to other larger propane bottles. I used to be able to connect this to my RV with a different hose. If you come over here, here's your normal bottle that you use on these. These are the little uh, one pounders and these run out fairly quick and these are easy you know, to swap out. But instead you want it, while you still can, get you an adapter hose for these kinds of things that you can connect to your normal propane bottle. You'll see that that valve here, similar to the one I just showed you here, come on over here, it's got the rounded beveled insert. Those are for these style bottles where they go into the fitting. You go inside the female area in these typical smaller propane bottles. This is a about a 20 gallon propane tank. I think these are typically what you use for your um, 20 pounder for your grills and so on. So those are easy, easy to carry around as well. So something else I invested in, I know I have my thousand gallon propane tank outside, but I wanted mobile backup propane. These are a hundred pound tanks. So this actually holds 80 pounds of propane because of the 20% rule for expansion. But one of the things I discovered with these, these are great. So I have these two as backups. If you look inside here, this is a different fitting setup than what I just showed you. This has a different thread pattern. So if you look over here, I have a converter that I've screwed in that allows you to screw in your normal propane fitting like I have here. 
So you have to have male threaded portion for that to work. Look, they come inside female threaded. So just be advised when you get these, make sure you get the adapter before it's too late and you need to use this, just FYI. So these are 100 pounders that hold 80, 80 uh, pounds or, uh, of propane in each one of these. So these are great to have for a backup as well. Another thing that we made a major investment on that we realized was important to us, I have a lot of friends that make their own dehydrated food. Um, I have friends that do food buckets. I have friends that do Mylar bags with the oxygen absorbers and stuff. Um, I looked at a lot of those options and for the time and effort to include the shelf life, a lot of those are limiting on the ease of preparation later to actually use them in the actual shelf life, even when you use oxygen absorbers and mylar bags um, with a lot of food products. What we have here are two one-year food supplies from Mountain House. My wife and I are two people. Um, we have a full caloric load for one-year food supply for each of us. Now we could distill that down and cut our rations and make that stretch even further. The beauty of this Mountain House product um, on the food palette is this has currently a 29 year shelf life. There's hardly anything out there that I looked at to do myself that has that kind of a shelf life. Yes, a pallet of this when we bought it was about five grand, pretty spendy. But when you look at the shelf life and the ease of preparation and the quality of the ingredients, you're talking about a pretty good way to go. It seems like a lot to bite the bullet on, but again, it's an investment. So these are in number 10 cans. So they're not an individual wrapped packages like the normal Mountain House, where you can just pour the hot water in. So for these, we would have to have a container, but all you have to do is add hot water. So this is a great investment, especially when you consider the value of the shelf life and the quality of the food and the ease of preparation. While we're in here, I just wanted to highlight a couple things. Right here, I have some Army five gallon water cans. I have three of these down in my shop and three of these up in my garage for mobile water uh, to move around my property and so on. So I do have backup oils. Um, a lot of the things that we do or we plan to do for grid down, uh, blackout, extended no power, no grocery store, no gas station is cooking over wood fires with cast iron primarily. So I wanted to have some backup uh, high quantities of a good quality oil. I discovered this. Most oils are just really bad. They're GMO, they cause inflammation. I discovered this rice bran oil, which is non-GMO, high heat oil that is non-inflammatory. These are 35 pound jugs, and I got two of those at the local restaurant supply. A great item to have for cast iron cooking or cooking your meats or whatever over a fire. You need oil, a good quality oil. And I do have some dried goods. I have. Um, dried milk here, milk powder, and that lasts quite some time. So just add water. And I got dried beans and some dried rices. This is all in addition to a lot of backup canned goods that we have in our garage up at our house, as well as in these cupboards here. Um, we know that most canned goods exceed the expiration date. So I have a lot of chili, uh, corned beef hash, high fat, high protein, uh, energy type canned goods. Um, so I have a lot of that as well, but this is long-term investment type stuff. So this is one of the things we realize, especially with the indicators we see in our economy, our world global situation, I think this is a wise way to go. A lot of my friends are making their own. Again, I didn't want to take the time and the expense. I, I did some crunching of numbers to do it myself to get this kind of quantity and quality would have cost me more actually. So this is a great way to go. And we got these for cut from Costco, the two pallets from Costco. Let's see what else we've done to fix some of our shortfalls. All right, everybody, just a quick reminder here. Hi, Murph. We did our video on this, this fire break and our, this 17 gallon wax stew pot or cauldron. The reason I wanted to highlight this again is you've seen our food supply, you've seen our IBC totes for water storage and how we can keep water even when we lose power. When we lose power or propane, this is our main source of cooking for large quantities of water. If you haven't considered how you're gonna do laundry and bathing, just like they did in the old days with off-grid scenario, this is a great alternative. This fire break we designed so we can contain and protect this cauldron. 
We can also run various grates across here for cooking with cast iron. This grate here gets your firewood up off the ground so you have a lot of good airflow. Got this off Amazon, it's the perfect size for this containment area. It's a 32 inch wagon wheel style grate. So if you haven't checked out our video where we built this and discussed this cauldron, please do. It's a great informative video. I wanted to show you this as well while we're out in my shop. I am not off grid, okay, living off grid. I use fuel, I use generators until I can't use fuel or generators. A couple things, I wanted to highlight this generator here. I know the Honda generators are amazing, but I, I got these Yamahas. I used to own a, a camper, a, a travel trailer, which I've sold, but when I had that trailer, I bought two of these. And the reason is when I, I ran these in line, I could run these in line with this given plug, connect these. These things had enough wattage to run my AC unit um, and my other appliances in my camper. But I never did that because of our climate where we live. I've only run the one, but I have the two if needed. You need to use the supplied inline cable for these to do an inline setup. So the rough wattage output on these is about 1,600 to 2,000 watts, depending on the load. And uh, for one, um, these are great because they have, they have a built-in inverter. They're AC uh, and DC. These things weigh 44 pounds dry weight and they hold 4.2 gallons of gas. And I have literally ran one of these all night on one tank. Um, I ran my equipment or my, my stuff in my camper and it ran all night. Another benefit of this, I think it's the lowest decibel rating of any small compact generator to include the Honda. Now you can hear it just idling. So that's a benefit. These are also rated uh, and approved by the Forest Service for the spark arrester on the exhaust output, which is great. So they're extremely portable, man packable, lightweight, and powerful. So these are a great generator. Um, can't say enough about them. I use these now to run my power tools if I'm out and away from electricity. So these are just a great, a great item to have. It, this is an addition to, these are packable versions. I have a backup generator that we're gonna show you as well uh, for our house to run our essentials. Okay, let's go take a look at that generator. Okay, so what we have here is our home backup generator. Now, do we have a whole home backup generator? We do not. When we moved in, this house did have a sub panel and a 30 amp plug for a backup generator. Running the essentials, and we're gonna show you that panel and what we're running here in a minute. But I had a generator company guy come out, and he was a prior army guy like me, he, we, he and I hit it off. And he came out and he said, hey, uh, Rick, for what you have, um, I don't think you need to spend the money rewiring everything to do a whole home generator because your sub panel really is all inclusive of what really matters. And he says you can save some money. And he, this is the generator he recommended I purchase. I actually got this and geez, this has been since 2019. Um, I bought this on Amazon and it, it was a great price. This is a great generator because it's a dual fuel. It runs off propane or gasoline and it, it's just a great, great generator. I have never run gasoline in this. I've only run propane. So here's the control panel just to highlight a couple things. This does have a battery, which <laughs> I've let die in the past, but I recharged it, got a new one recharged. And I, I do run this from time to time to keep it lubricated and uh, keep the battery charged. But you've got various plugs in here. You've got your, uh, your 120 plug here. Um, you got AC, you got multiple options. It's got its own breaker, its own plugs. So this plug here, I'm gonna show you, uh, is what goes into our house. It's always kind of fun, I gotta figure out how that lines up. So that just plugs in there, and I do keep this covered when I'm not using it and roll this cord up to protect it. So it's this simple. Another cool thing besides this running gasoline or propane, it's got these nice handles that fold up on the wheels and you can really maneuver this around. So I keep this under the covered area of my deck with the cover on it when it's not in use. Um, if you come around this way, you'll see how I have run my gas line and I keep that connected to uh, a pipe that I had plumbed in that is connected to our propane. Uh, our thousand gallon propane tank. And if you come around here, you can see that if and when I need to unscrew here 
or unscrew there, I can actually connect a fitting adapter and I can bring individual propane bottles down and run them off of here if I wanted to. Now let's just say one of those 100 gallon tanks I have as a backup, my 1000 gallon runs out, I can bring that down and connect it as well. So let's go ahead and run this up and I'll show you how quick it starts on battery. control if it's not under load it slows down to conserve fuel which right now I do not have the circuit breaker on so it's not sending any power to the house right now even though it's plugged in so here's full board okay let's see how this is plugged into our house So when I need to use this, and we've used it several times, we had a power outage for about a week, and this generator ran the whole time, did a great job. This is where it plugs into the house. This is a 30 amp connection there, and that was uh, already wired in, so that makes this very convenient. Let's go inside and see what this is running. So this is our whole home breaker panel. Um, this is not our sub panel, so this runs the entire house. So this is the sub panel off of the main panel for the generator. When I said it runs the essentials, it really does. It keeps our furnace going, so we keep the heat going. If we, we could run our fireplace, but we can keep our furnace going. It runs our master bedroom complete lights, outlets, our refrigerator in the kitchen and freezer, our basement lights, which includes a, a guest room and a kitchenette, it runs all the plugs in my garage, which keeps two freezers in my garage up and running from losing our meat, our microwave in the kitchen, and it keeps our constant uh, instant hot water heater up and running. One of the things that when we moved in, this was a major upgrade that it didn't have, is our well was not connected to the generator sub panel. So when we lost power, we lost water. We added, we had an electrician come in and add our well pump to the sub panel so that when we, are, we lose power and we have propane to run our generator, it keeps us in water. And as we showed you, if we lose power and propane completely, then we have the simple pump on our well so we can keep water. I hope this video has been helpful on some food for thought for things that we did to shore up our major deficiencies for immediate needs for preparedness on our homestead. This is not all that we need to do. We still have plans for solar to be off grid so we can stay electrically powered without being on the grid. And we wanna create our own ecosystem. This spring I'll be planting a lot of fruit and nut trees and we're looking at getting some stock, maybe some pigs, maybe some goats for their milk, etc. But we are really trying to kind of think outside the box. These are some big projects we've already done. They've proved to be already very beneficial. Thanks for joining us today. I hope we gave you some good food for thought and ideas for things you might want to consider to fix or shore up for your homestead preparedness. Please subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time.